All right, all right, we are all live. We are on live. Gonna wait till everybody get on here. Welcome, welcome, whoever's on there. Get over to my comment section here for I can see what's going on. William Cuz, hey brother. Uh uh James, hey James, how you doing, man? Wait, we're gonna fire up, wait on people, get in here. We got some people watching anyway. Uh, I'm going to give you a real quick advance where I've been at. You know, last week I didn't have a show, guys. Uh, I was down at James Benner's Waypoint Survival Class, Level 3. Man, if you guys got to get a, an affordable class, you got to go see. That's what I was doing today. We've been working on videos. I got a brand new video out. It's a tent steak trick. You guys need to check it out. So uh, everybody knows uh, the guest star tonight is Blackie Thomas. And we're going to talk about uh, R and D a new product, and this is from the ground up, guys. So you guys get to see the whole thing, and we want your feedback on this. So come on up, Blackie. He's he's out there, up standing on the wing, ready to go. There we go. There he is, wing. Uh, There's my special guest, Blackie Thomas. You guys don't know him, I'm sure. <laughs> it's uh, I say everybody on my channel though. Man, I'm going to have trouble keeping up. Looks like we're going to have a big show tonight, guys. So don't, if I miss your name, man, I know Michael's on there, Gary's on there, James, David's on there. I went to class with David. Uh, we had a blast down there. He was in the class at Waypoint Survival. Uh, and so uh, if, if I if I miss your name, don't get mad, man, because we're going to get busy tonight. Hey, Dean. Uh, everybody say hi to Blackie. Hi, guys. <laughs> and, so uh, what we was talking about is uh, uh, we've been working on a a sack envy a little bit bigger than the haver the haver sack that Mikey put out. Mm -hmm. We need like a mid range pack instead of going with a full blown pack, mm -hmm. and we kind of want it adaptable. You know, the the the, the haver sack is great. I call it a day hot bag. Could I do an open hide in it? Yes, but I don't want to. <laughs> you know? well, uh, it, it covers your crafting, it covers your height, it covers your 10 C's and etc. And yes, I do carry a hammock and I do carry a small tarp in my everyday carry haversack. But there's I want a little more comfort, you know, and you don't have room for a lot of food here in a cook pot. Now you start hanging stuff on the strap because it's too big to fit in here and et cetera. And that's why you can't get anything in your haversack because it's packed solid. <laughs> I wanted the haversack to be a kit, pre-set up, ready to go. So when I run my hand in there, I know what I'm getting. You know, it's in here. Here are my contents. Then the next bag, which will be underneath it, would then carry the actual camping gear because let's face it whenever you leave your when you're going on your hike you're getting there and we're talking about good weather you know i get there i'm going to set up my little camp i'm putting up my hammock a good tarp i want a full-size tarp i want to have enough food to be enjoyable i want to have a cook pot i can carry to be enjoyable that's about it a few minor little luxuries then that bag is basically empty you know that carried that in my haversack being on top of it is like a flap. Now the haversack becomes my primary because I'm going to put the haversack on them to go fishing or we're going to go over here and explore. Or we're going to go hunt. We're going to whatever and have my camp set up. See what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's that's where I use my haversack. My haversack is like my guide bag. You know, I, I showed up at camp. I dropped my big pack. But... We all know the story that when I fell in, I didn't have the gear with me. The haversack's just a bare minimum kit for me to get by if I get lost, get injured, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. I don't want to – the more stuff I stuff, I got sitting right here and it's a ball because I've packed everything in it. Comes and, comes. And, and so, you know, the haversack is leave all my gear at the camp, go hunting, carry extra shotgun shells, whatever, you know, have my skin and knives in there and ready to go. And that, that's where I see my haversack is. 
And that's why I want to discuss Blackie. And then we got to talking about this mid mid range back. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, is when Blackie come up with this bag, uh, what we want to do is get more feedback from you guys because there, there's a lot of design change. After we design it, then we get all these extra changes. So is, is that where we're going with this? Yeah. I mean, because there's a lot of really cool ideas out there um, that are very viable. Yeah. I mean, like, for example, a lot of guys want to carry an axe. I mean, and I understand that up north. You need an axe more than you need a, you know, a, a saw, really. Um, and so being able to strap an axe or an entrenching tool or a bow saw or whatever to that bag, how are we going to do that? What I'm thinking of doing, we'll just take this point, uh, go with that, because I've had a lot of people, and this is the prototype we're playing with. Like I said, this is a surplus bag we're playing with. Um... I'm thinking on the side, let me find where I'm sitting up. All right, on the side right here, what I want to do is take a strip, sew it spaced out like a half inch, like you find on the back of the blackbird, like this. So these are in these are loops right here. Okay. With that, I could then put an axe up here and put a soft shackle around that and anchor an axe. Or I could anchor a big piece of gear. Or I could anchor whatever. By making a soft shackle up, I'm going to carry like my grail hooked to this side. Okay. All I need is a loop down here at the bottom and up here at the top, something to anchor it so it doesn't fall down. Put it through the loop in the bottom and hook the soft shackle at the top. Or a cabiner, you know. But having it like this, I have, it's kind of like Molly's system, multiple places that I could hook to. So whatever piece of gear I got, it fits, you know, with just a little bit of work for me. I like the bags that have got that dedicated on the front of it sleeve to slide an axe in. And that's great. You put an axe in it. If you try to put a shovel in it, it stands up like this. Uh, you can't put a bow saw in it. Well, you put a folded up bow saw to fit. But you see, it's sort of a one-hit wonder. It only fits a, a handle. Well, what if I want to carry something like this? And so that's a limitation. If I went to a strip like that on the side, one on each side and one down the front middle, I can hook virtually anything to this pack at any time in the future, right? Well, and that's what we're getting questions on, you know. One pack for your axe, but I also carry a silky saw. Yeah, I like my silky saw. Uh, uh, I think it's a combination. You need both of them. I mean, we're getting comments on that. David said you can know, sleep on both sides. Yeah, uh, Edward Ed said, you know, is it water resistance? Yeah, but yeah, these these the are bag will definitely. I want to make it out of the same stuff the haversack's made out of. So it'd be, right, it'd it's gonna be the same. But what we're trying to do is. <laughs> Because you, you don't want to be walking around with your silky saw and your axe if you're out exploring or catching berries or, you, you know, maybe fishing right down the river. But if you go in, you need your fire kit and stuff like that. Exactly. So we can drop that. But that's how that middle way bag, uh, you would, what we call the the overnighters, what we're kind of coining it right now. And yeah. so I, I want to see the silky saw on one side, the axe on one side or on the front somewhere. Because I do carry small four sticks. You know, a saw is not a hammer, but an axe is really close to a hammer. You know, so you got to, they, they complement each other. It's not one or the other. And well, look at the tools that we commonly hear about silky saws, silky saw, silky saw, you know, yeah. that big boy, um, a forest axe, an entrenching tool. Okay. An entrenching tool, it's a small, shovel like a, a cold steel shovel how about a bow saw how about you know all these things that we commonly see and if you made a pack that had a unique carrier for each one of them you don't have nothing but a axe carrier then you know what i mean well jonathan that. jonathan brought up a good point you know about being molly attached you know if we can molly it somehow and then that way you can switch sides or whatever. Uh, you know, this is an open discussion, guys. We're we're yeah, going here to the moon and back, man. So, yeah, uh, I like the idea of it. And 
<laughs> talk about using soft shackles and you know like a, a bushcraft zip tie like i use if i'm just gonna tie it on here like get there and it's coming off this pack you know i don't carry this this much well i'll just simply take a bushcraft zip tie which is a canadian jam knot run through two anchor points zip zip it's tight when i get there I grab the lock knot zip zip and pull it off okay not a big encumbrance next time i go i want to carry something else again i just put that on there what if i'm carrying like that big silky saw a lot okay i'll go ahead and make a soft shackle for it that fits snugly around the body and up here at the top snugly so i pull it snug and lock it snug and lock it i'm done and not have to make cabiners, not have to buy an accessory. I can just take paracord and make what I need to be able to do it. We're bushcrafters. We take what we got and make what we need, you know. And then when I go to transport that big silky saw, when I'm done transporting it, I should say I'm back home, I take those two I made up saw shackles and just hook the belt loop on it and put it up with it. So next time I'm ready, there it is. There's my connector. Ready to go. And I don't have to pay somebody to make a connector. I can make a connector. Well, yeah. I mean, there's going to be a lot of ways to run this. I'm, I'm looking at the comments because we're we're going to rely on the, on the people on the show to, mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying, to mm -hmm. use it. Everybody's going to chip in on this. That's the key. Oh, yeah. Please do. Uh, you know, David said, you know, Molly's universal. Use carabiners. Uh, Ed said, water, shelter, food, some tools in a pack. Uh, soft shackles. Oh, they're flipping on me. Uh, shelf shackles are lighter, lighter than carabiners, absolutely, and they don't damage equipment. You know, yeah. we're carabiners. They <laughs> got me saying carabiners again. Carabiners, uh, uh, you know, can, can get into your, your gear and stuff, scratch it up. Uh, yeah. well, what about a pouch system? Woodchuck says, What about a pouch system that works with the straps, one size for the silky, etc.? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's... something like that. I mean. That's kind of what it's hard to make a pocket be universal. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm using a big board, but some people want the smaller silky, you know, to make that pocket fit. You, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be hard. Can we, can we do that? You know, where we can adjust the pocket or adjust the silky. So, you know, it, it's, that's what we're working on. Most of the pockets that are out there, silky saws or even the modern Molly carriers and stuff like that, are of a given fixed size. So all we do then is you need a universal attachment point. And that was the idea with the Molly system. It was a series of loops. So whatever you wanted here, because the individual, you know, we're doing it for the military, the individual soldier, missions change, and I need four ammo pouches right here. One, two, three, four. Next time we go out, I need this one big bag to go right here for some mission piece of gear and two of this. So instead of having 50 kinds of packs, you had a pack and multiple attachments. You know, and as long as I have a universal attachment point, and by hooking up that series of loops on the front and the sides of the pack, I can guarantee, and one across the bottom. Okay. Well, that, I'm reading the comments again. You know, uh, William says, you know, I like the idea of pockets on the side and uh and moved on me uh straps for small shovel and folds mm -hmm. uh like david said you know why three inch pocket in the front and hang something in the back uh i like woodchuck making the pockets removable makes overall bag more useful yeah. so i can build the silky pocket and molly it to the back exactly and i can actually put my axe sleeve and molly it to the back because mm -hmm. somebody people want their axe on the right someone on the left you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying so that's, I think that's a good idea if we molly the sides of that, mm -hmm. you know, and get it. Add, say, two or three, you know, this is down the line, okay. But if if I could go poof and make something right now in front of me, um, I would like a couple of little pockets, you know, like a four by six, a four by eight, a four by ten, a four by twelve that could attach to the side or the front or the back for what I wanted down the line because maybe I want to carry uh, all my ropes and cords in one bag on the side. Maybe I want a, a fishing belt pouch. You know, a lot of guys like to go into backcountry and they take those take-apart fishing rods and stuff. How about a pre-made-up 
pouch that has all my fishing tackle, my took apart pole, everything in it that I can just attach to the side, quick connect it to the bag. When I get there, disconnect it, and it goes on to my belt. Now, as my whatever tackle box or whatever, or any other component, you know. Um, well, and that, that's why I wanted to I wanted to throw my two cents in on the tarp. Remember, yeah. I talked about hanging the tarp below that bag. Mm -hmm. You know, like a sleeve. You know, on my canvas tarp, which is very heavy. It's, mm -hmm. I think it's Tent Smith. It slides into a tube where I can close it. It's totally protected. My tarp's waterproof anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could do the double strap thing and strap it on there. But, you know, having like a sleeve in there for that to slide in there, a detaching sleeve. Because, man, right now it's a, it's 90-some degrees, 92 degrees outside. Sleeping underneath the black tarp or dark blue tarp is going to be miserable. Yeah. You, you know, so I won't be carrying it. But we still need to talk gear. What, what do we mainly carry? An axe, a tarp, which these are the heavy items that we can drop at camp. You know, yeah. I'm not going too far with my sack through camp. That I, you know, you're going to camp. Okay, what I need. This is my person. Okay, I've got my haversack. That's got all my ten C's. That's got all my bushcraft gear at my fingertips. There's my fire kit. There's my fire roll in there. There's my tender. There's my multiple sources of, of fire making. I'm going to be toting my grail probably in some way. I've got a tinder bag sitting there ready to go. I've got all the things I need, my cordage, all of that in that thing or hooked to that. So that's good. Now for the camping bag, we'll call it the overnighter, I need a relatively small size, you know, hammock. I need a good size tarp. You know, yes, you can get by by five by seven. I've done it many, many times. You'll love it when you get a bigger one. <laughs> Not me and a down for it. I ain't big enough. I need to have a 10, buddy. <laughs> uh, you and I both have sat there like this. Yeah, That's buddy. Uh -uh. Where it's blowing under on every side, and it's it's out as big as you can get it. You know, and it's still the spray's coming around you. You need more real estate. You know how many times I wanted to stretch out in that storm? Stretch my legs out, man. You know? Yeah. But that's what I said. You could put your hammock and, you know, like a one win hammock and a one win tarp on that bottom tube. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Or tube yeah. or big sleeve, whatever you want to call it. And that way it's down here low. And I still don't want my tarp, especially my one wear gear, I don't want to get it muddy. That's why I said when we strap our tarp to the outside with two leather buckles, yeah, it's nice and convenient. But brambles, getting wet, muddy, you know, why even, you know, my tarp was very expensive. Got ten by ten ten Smith ain't cheap, but you know I like to protect it. Uh, sure, I, I would like to run a one wind tarp because it's one third the weight. <laughs> you know? Well, that's just it. That's one of the reasons I'm changing the gear. Is I've always run old school stuff. The durability. I've still got a ten by ten tarp I got from uh, Panther Primitives. I think it was years ago. It's bulletproof. I set up in the winter. I've you know, set it up as a standalone tent, a diamond shelter. Got in it with a cot. I mean, it's one of my favorites. And a canvas tarp is very forgiving. You can use it in a roll on the bottom. If it gets some little nick, as soon as it gets wet, it'll swell shut. You're fine. Sill nylon is not forgiving. If it gets a little hole in it, like you set it down on a briar, you got a hole. You know, and so yeah. you protect that tarp. Um, and so it's I just want to say hi, hi to James. Bender from Waypoint Survival, he's out there. Hey, James. Uh, trying to keep up with comments, guys. You guys are blowing this thing up, and I love it. Uh, uh, sleeve to oh, bottom. Grommets instead of full sleeve, use paracord to cinch them, whatever size needed. Yeah, see, Woodchuck, that's what we're talking about. We're trying to get all these ideas. Again, I'm repeating myself. We're trying to get all these ideas from you guys so we can make a good, we're going to overnighter pack. If you got stuck out there, and you've got enough gear, you know, you got your five C's in your haversack, your 10 C's in the overnighter. Mm -hmm. We'll be ready yeah. to go. James pointed out there, how about a dry bag? Absolutely. You know, depending on conditions, um, that would be an excellent idea if one of them, especially like that 20 liter or smaller, you know, dry bag that I could pack my gear into and put it in on the bottom. Guarantee everything. I've thought about, and that's one of the things I've thought about this bag is, could I put such a dry bag inside of it as a liner you know then you're beyond bulletproof 
And then when I get there, I'd use it for a pillow when I get all my gear out of it. You know, I don't like a piece of gear that has one purpose. I like multitasking. Well, so, there's a comment from Southeast Trapper, Southeast Ohio Trapper. Good to know you. Seems like gear keeps increasing. Keep a half set. This is what we're trying to do. He's talking about put it in a medium Alice pack. Right, right there's my Alice pack, guys. Uh, but we wanted to keep it in the style of the canvas we have. This bag is our haversack is going to be attached to this bag in the one pack. It's going to be together. I can when I get to camp, I can drop the haversack, put it on my arm, and go. You, you know. Uh, years ago, I was very lucky to find in surplus a small Alice pack called the Tropical Pack. They didn't make many of them. Um, early Vietnam, there was a couple of them came out, and then that was it. The medium Alice became the pack. Um, that light Alice pack, that small Alice pack, uh, carried more than enough camping gear for an overnighter for me. It was small, it was compact, it was similar in size to what this bag is right here. Okay? It was big enough to carry the gear, but not so bulky. Okay. And yeah, we can always scale up, but now you're getting into the territory of the rucksack. You know, the rucksack, in my mind, is I'm going camping for up to a week. Okay. It has to carry all my good camping gear, plus at least three or four, probably five days worth of food. You know, that's the rucksack's job. And of course, I'll gear up that. But what if I'm just doing an overnighter? I mean, let's face, let's let's be real. What are we doing? We're going to leave home and we're going to get to the place and do our hike or walk in or set up our base camp. Food. We're going to need a lunch. We'll need a snack. We're going to need a dinner or supper. Morning, we'll need a breakfast. We'll need a lunch, probably a snack. And we're coming out. We're going to eat dinner on the way home or whatever or eat dinner at home. So I need actually one breakfast, two lunch, one supper, two snacks, something to drink. That's my entire food allotment I need in this. If I use a small, compact hammock, small, compact, relatively uh, tarp, I'm 80% there. You know, now my haversack does everything else. All of this is really transport. I'm going to tote it to the site, set up, and once I set it up, that bag is done. You know, my haversack becomes the bag of use now. And I can, I, 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 many years I camped with a rucksack, with an Alice. But the thing about it is, you had to tote the Alice everywhere. So you got there and you offloaded all your stuff. And then the remaining gear was in the pockets of the Alice. Now we're going to go down the two miles down the, the river and do some fishing. I had to tote and run basically empty Alice with some stuff in the thing. Now you start, well, I got to have pockets I pull out. And I keep repackaging to where now I'm carrying a pile of packages, you know, of belt pouches and whatever. It starts getting after a while, half your weight, you're toting other stuff. Yeah. I want to line. That's what Shasta Ham said. You know, please no attachment bags. They're too heavy, wild, wild, no caribbean use method attached you know, like silky saw and stuff like that. Well, that's the thing. If we can build the bag, you don't have to have the saw pouches. You can still hook your gear to it. It's exactly. very hard to make one bag where everybody's going to like. That's what we're doing this channel for, is mm -hmm. trying to get all these ideas from you guys to say, hey, you know, just like Shasta said, man, I don't want no bags. Well, then don't order the bags with, with the main bag. Exactly. You, you know, get the, the overnighter and it would have the attachment points where you can hook whatever you want. If yeah. I, don't, I ain't got bit by it. And then that's the whole thing where we can drop gear because I live in the state of Ohio. We don't have four seasons. We've got 15 seasons. You, you know, so we're, I'm constantly changing stuff in my bag, especially when it gets cold out. I, I need, you know, a bigger bag for a heavy coat, extra clothes, maybe a pair of sleeping long jobs. You know, uh, you guys are, I'm, thanks for all comments, guys. I got to say that. Uh, uh, hikers use carpentry, carpentry bags. I'm trying to catch you up. Lightweight and water resistant. Remember our, that's, uh, 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're talking about going to uh, all the way up to, back, to backpack or rucksack size. <clears throat> the bag that um, Campcraft makes, the rucksack, that was something me and Jason worked with, where it was a haversack that me and him had worked on in the past called the Woodsman. It was based on a 1800s design, 1870-something cavalry bag. And I liked the way the flap was a compartment to itself, and you could put an entire ruby into that flap, okay? And he scaled that up and created the rucksack which they're in the middle of, of creation now of a new generation of it they will have pockets on the side to take water bottles and etc so that's my rucksack that i carry now is that thing the flap is an actual big pocket as well and then the main body so i got a rucksack i've got a haversack it's between them i want a little bit more than the haversack will give me comfortable because i can't carry food comfortably and a cooktop comfortably Yet I'm not in a position where this 48-hour camp out, do I need that big rucksack, you know? Well, I can't carry the weight like that no more. I need something in between. Mm-hmm. I mean, this CJ up here, he says, you know, I'm not sure we said attach it like the old C- CFP-90. I'm not sure what pack that is, but I have to look that up. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, the Molly type attachments. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, he, Michael asked, are we talking frame dial packs, frame for weight displacement? No, we're not running the frame pack. This is smaller my house pack. You know, I've got, believe it or not, as big as I am, I carry that, you know, the small house pack. I, I like it, but then it's 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 got not enough uh, pockets on it, basically. I need to have a sack of that. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Because this is my, my five C's. If I fall in the water, I'm cold, whatever, I my fire and everything. That needs to stay on my person. The problem is, I noticed even going to survival camps and these places, everybody leaves their gear at their camp and then walk around. You've yeah. seen that, like we all done it. Yeah. yeah, and that's just it. You get there, what do you do? You take your rucksack, hit the ground, you start pulling out, and you start setting up your camp. Then you hang it on the tree. Well, either I have to take my haversack and take up valuable rucksack space by staring it that way. Or tie it to it or whatever, because once I get to camp, that rucksack's done. I mean, the rucksack's done. Its job is to carry the bulky stuff to camp to set up the base camp. Where the haversack's job is now the activities, the scouting, the crafts, etc. And it's not encumbersome. That, I don't want to overload a haversack, which really isn't set up for that. You know, single strap starts digging into you and you start getting heavy. And I don't want to tote a great big old heavy rucksack when I don't need it. I want to streamline it a little bit and be as, as clean and, and easy to carry as possible um, and set it up. Shasta made a comment, you know, I'm not concerned about ordering extra bags. I'm more concerned about the attachment system being more than anything simple and adoptable. That's what we're looking for. We're doing the same thing. Keep it simple, stupid. That's, you know, that's the reason that I want to use that strip with those holes in it. Because with that, I can easily attach anything. If I want to put an axe up here, I just go around the neck through that. It'll be a series of these loops like this in a line. So it'll be like one, two, three, four going down the thing. With that, I can hook just about anything I'd want to hook to that bag. And to talk about frame, let me bring this up right quick. One Again, I show you, this F1 was because here in the back of it, there's a pocket. Okay, now this pocket can act as a pseudo frame as well. Now, what I intend to carry in it is some sort of dense foam pad, like take a U.S. Army uh, old sleeping pad and cut it to this shape so I could slide it in there. That way, when I get, I'm not done. I just want to stop a minute and rest. Ground's kind of wet or whatever. I can grab and pull that straight out and have a dry place to sit down to cook me a quick lunch or whatever slide it right back. Now that acts as a pad and it acts kind of like a frame for the pack and keeping it in shape so it isn't just truly a bag. Well, and, that, and that's uh, uh, I'm going back to uh, Edward says, you know, how many liters is this? We ain't figured that out yet. You know, that this is all R&D right now. We don't know the actual size of it and, and what liters we want it to be. 
It's got to be between the rucksack and the haversack. That's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. and the whole uh, idea is a minimum kit. It's we're trying to keep it where we're not tempted to overload it and tote way too much weight. You know, what do you need? Like we talked about a minute ago, if I need a tarp, I need my hammock, I need food for the required amount of time, I need a cook pot and etc. for the required amount of time, and a small area worth of uh, comfort items like carry additional this or whatever, extra socks, whatever and not grow into like the military uses a salt pack think of a salt pack in modern terminology something like book bag like us old guys went to school years ago you know book bag type deal um whereas the haversack will put with on top of it a major thunder rolling over me yay i hear that so if i suddenly disappear guys it's internet it ain't me so huh? Guys, I'm trying to keep up on the comments. You guys are smoking us, man. So uh, uh, it's uh, that's why a two bag system, one bag for one thing, the other bag for the other thing. And we're kind of basing on that wood, Chuck. That's what we're trying to do. We're we're morphing these two together, but this is going to be my drop pack at camp, and this is going to stay on me the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, I caught myself down there at Waypoint Survival School just last week. Uh, I kept laying my haversack down. You because it's too full, and, and then I gotta go get over my ferro rod, I, I gotta go get my flint steel, you, you know. And that's we're in the habit of doing that, you know. That's why I said we got to really stay with the haversack on our persons when we walk away from the camp, you know. Uh, okay. Brian, you said, How about a yoke system? Uh, yeah, you could. Um, in my years of doing uh, camping, I used a lot of military surplus because it was cheap. It was good gear and it was cheap. And so I started in the mid 70s. And I would take the US military web belt and Y harness, and then I'd attach up here at my shoulders, I attached the US Army butt pack. I put a gap and I put the other, the second US Army butt pack on the belt like you'd normally see it. Between those two left a gap with the loops that went to the top butt pack. That's where my shelter system went into. So it was a streamlined two packs. I could put my food in the top and things bottom. So I used a web type system before. Uh, and that can be very viable. But again, when we do that, if we go into a yoke system of some kind, it's going to hook to something else. Um, you, you're getting up into the bulky areas now. You know, we want a bag. And, and someone else down here, I'm sorry I missed your name, but I, I got the thing about using a wide strap. Um, this overnighter bag will have a pair of shoulder straps on it. The haversack will have its own strap. So I like to use, and I believe it's the best way to do really, is some sort of yoke-like backpack straps on it with a chest thing. So that if you do get a little bit of a load, you attach across the sternum strap and pull it off so you don't get choked up here. Your arms don't go numb. It doesn't saw on you so much, and you can transport it more easily. Now, I live in some very thick cover, and so this is going to vary where you're at, and you do a lot of ducking and twisting, trying to go under this, by this, up that, whatever. And so it's got to be flexible. It's got to be a system that allows me to move, because if I'm rigidly like this, you're just going to hang up and tangle up on everything. And that's one of the reasons I'm trying to shy away a little bit from a, through rucksack and just not why not just make a small ruck well yeah you could but i want to incorporate that haversack into it up on the top flap so that when i get there it, it comes off it's a carry system and what i need it you can look at it as a, a basement for a haversack you know that stuff i'm gonna have at camp but, and then the haversack um it needs to be something I can carry comfortably. I like shoulder straps for that. Uh, in fact, I designed the Blackbird, as I've demonstrated, to have a long enough strap that I can actually carry it like shoulder straps. You lengthen it out, pull it, and then so you're holding it, and you flip it up over your head this way, and then you pull the straps that way, and you can turn it into a knapsack of sorts. 
uh, but it just doesn't have the capacity to carry all the camping gear. And I didn't want to just go make a bigger haversack. Right. You know, people make that mistake. They end up with a, I'll make my big haversack. When I was doing living history uh, for the French and Indian time period, there was a haversack from that period called a French haversack. And this French haversack was not worn like a, uh, we think of it, it went across your back. There was a strap came across your chest. And it was a two-piece that in here were two pockets. So when you laid it out flat like that, you had a pocket in here and a pocket in here for all your gear. And then you did it like that and you put your blanket roll in the middle. Okay? And it was really kind of like a saddle on a blanket rolled up. Okay? Um, and then the belt would come and buckle on to you and went across one shoulder. I carried one of those for a while. Yeah, it did okay. Disadvantage. Anytime you wanted anything out of that pack, you had to take it completely off and unpack it. Uh, you couldn't just reach in and grab something. You ended up having to tote another haversack in addition to it because if I wanted my fire kit, I'd have to take it all the way off my back, unstrap it, get the blanket roll out, go in this pocket, get my fire kit. Um, I don't like that. I want simplicity. Well, here, here's one. Dean said, you know, I, I know you said you didn't want to frame, but take a look at the flex vent system north face runs. I, I'm not familiar with that. Mm -hmm. uh, hard plastic shape uh, like your back and chunks and padding and airflow between. He said he's, he's running for hundreds of miles at the Pathfinder School. Light, durable, comforter, and cheap. So I'm not familiar with that, Dean, but that's something I'll look up online. Uh, Jonathan Frisbee is my link man, or my brother, lots of leather crafts on there. We, he can throw a link up if he can find that. Because one thing, you know, I see some comments about Dyneema and making these things ultra light. Dyneema, we're looking for durable stuff. This haversack that Mikey puts out is a 50 year haversack. I mean, if you just take care of it, it's really a lifetime haversack. We're looking at more bulletproof gear. Uh, that's I, what I, I, I see a lot of guys, and I've taught, I've got several friends that are young, they're in their 20s right now, and they're doing, I call it trail running. They call it hiking, but their object of the game is see how many miles they can make in a day. Um, and they're, uh, Tony is presently working through the Appalachian Trail doing it in, in sections. Uh, and his pack is eight pounds. That's it. Well, it's this thin little almost see-through material that I don't even know how much he paid for that and all of his gear fits in it um, and it's all of this Dyneema's and these wonder materials the fact is and this is the, one of those hard truths it's plastic it's a fancy name like Cuban fiber or whatever but it's plastic plastic does not heal when you poke a hole in plastic to sew it or whatever it can fray, it can crack, or it can waller out. It can't seal up, whereas some fiber like canvas can. The fibers actually swell, you know, if you get them wet, or etc. That's the reason you find these hundred-year-old packs laying around that are heavy canvas. Yeah, God, they weigh so much, but they last forever. It's, it, they just don't wear out, it seems. And yet, my friend who's doing this. Um, he was telling, showing me some pack. He pulled it out of his pocket. He folded it up and put it in his pocket. It weighs nothing, you know, like four ounces or something or less. And that's the third pack he's had in like five years from this company. What happens? Well, in him running and hiking, etc., the material starts sawing where it's sewed together, but the material starts sawing. Them holes start wallowing out. Then the thread starts popping. And there's no way to repair it other than duct tape. And he gets maybe a year, depending on how hard he's had to work it, you know, and then they give up. Um, I'm For absolutely lightweight, yes, absolutely. I give you that in a heartbeat. It's the durability. And if I'm going, you know, like my haversack, that, that's a chunk of change. I'm not unaware of that. $85 for a, pack, for a bag is, yeah, but it's made out of material that will probably be there for your kids to have. Short of it getting in a fire or you just abrading it some way or whatever, it's going to be there the rest of your life. And so I want to pay one time and cry one time. 
Um, the thought of spending $300 for a pack that I might get two or three dozen at tops campouts before it falls apart, yeah, you know. Yeah. They're not made for longevity. They're meant for light, light weight. Right. And they to do that. That's what Dean said. He said, my misunderstood the pack. But it's the metal. It's the plastic frame. Mm -hmm. uh, what we were talking about. Yeah. And they're, my, uh, I forget what size uh, I sold it. My uh, U.S. military pack frame was all plastic. Comfortable pack frame. Mm -hmm. It was just way too big for my needs. I mean, it was too big for me camping three days while my gear. And I can't carry that stuff in anymore. But like we're talking about, you know, Ed would make a, you know, about his Blackberry. You know, he puts his food in the top pocket, large pocket, where my shoulder, bank line. We we know we can get everything in the half second we need, especially our 10 Cs. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about let's do a three-day camp and we're going to be running heavy canvas or maybe small tent or maybe my one-one gear, you know, tarp and thing. I need to carry and it won't fit my half sack. It has to either hang off of it. That's what we're going with. You guys are getting, you know, uh, uh, great, great input, man, right now. Uh, uh, James, it was totally worth getting the money to, to get a Blackbird. Well, uh, that, that that thing is a bulletproof piece of gear. I mean, mine's sitting right here. It, it got trenched down poor last week. It got drugged through the mud. Uh, it got set down. It, you know, I set it in the dirt. That's not that old of a haversack, guys. <laughs> it, it's 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 pretty beat up now, but hey, I get I'm I'm lucky I get to do testing on it, right, Black? <laughs> yeah, don't ever tell Dan to test it. Uh, there was a bag sent to him one time. He tied it to the back of his lawnmower and and went what what twelve acres? You yeah, know, yeah. Just drag it behind the lawnmower. Sure. Well, how do you accelerate the wear on a bag carrying it? Put that weight in there. I want to see if the straps will hold. And and Blackie, in his little genius mind. This little trick right here was just 45 in this bag it makes it carry so much better yeah, exactly. than the other bags. I didn't like Harris sacks because they run forward on you. I put this back on my right kidney, it's gone. I, I forgot about it, you, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to get some of the stuff out of there a little lighter. You know, that's what we talked about, the knapsack or the overnight or what we're calling. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that one because I don't need to tote my – I'm going down the creek for water or checking traps or something. I don't need to be carrying my whole pack, you know, with my canvas. Yeah, my tent's all set up, but I'm trying. We're trying to find Miller Road, and we want to see what you guys thought about that. Well, uh, right now I'm running the one wind twelve foot hammock on my on my main hammock. Uh, excuse me, twelve foot tarp on my eleven foot hammock. That tarp rolls up to about that by about that long. Okay, easily fits into the haversack but it's full length and taking up like a third of the haversack all right now if i take the smallest hammock which is my one win ultralight which is about the size of this cup and stand it up next to it and then i add in this is what i'm carrying for summertime a sleeping bag because all it is is a uh, rectangle sleeping bag liner that I split one in to make it a top quilt, stick the feet in it and throw it over you because that's all I need down here. The lows are going to be in the 70s, so that's it. Uh, I had a small little pillow. Yes, it will physically fit inside of the Blackbird, but I ain't got room for my C stuff in. My, then I'm forced to put all my other stuff up in the top, and I don't want to carry it that way. And Carry a separate, a second haversack. Put one on each hip. Now we're getting into the encumbering part, remember? Now your strap's going everywhere and everything. I wanted one thing I put on. Because if I did slip and go into a creek, I got to be able to get out of it. I don't want to be encumbered and hung up. So I've got to be able to get it off. Two, I want to have enough room to carry this plus the food. So the haversack won't do that plus food. Even though I'm going to streamline down the food, like I said, for a 48 hour, I'm going to need one breakfast, two lunch, one dinner, and two snacks, and then something to drink. Um, I can streamline that down. We're, me and Dan's old school, I can eat, you know, 
uh, <laughs> more beef stew right out of the can. I ain't got to heat nothing up. Yeah, bean and weenies, man. <laughs> yeah, and it most of the time, what we're talking about here is a summer type bag anyway. It's hot. You don't want to heat hot. You don't want to eat hot food. It raises your core temperature. Something cool is what you're craving, you know. And uh, if I could find a way to carry a salad out there, I'd do it, you know. But uh, it's just a way to, you know, carry what we need. And in your where you're at is going to be different because, like, up there where Dan's at, the overnight lows are going to drop down into the 60s or 50s in certain parts of the country in the height of summer, you know. My down here near Florida, I'm in lower Alabama, L.A., um, 70 degrees at night is a cool night in the summer. I mean, here lately it's been 74, 75 is the low. I don't need a sleeping bag. I need something to sleep in, a hammock, something to throw over me. A wooby is really too much. It's just enough to keep the bugs off of you and a little bit of warm. That's it. It's that little thing yeah. is well, I, I was down there, uh, Waypoint Survival, and I mean, it dropped down to like 58 the first night there. Mm-hmm. And we're in August and dropped down to 58. I had my blanket on me on my hammock. I had my underquilt on because of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the underquilt can work both ways, too. It kind of keeps a little heat off of you, you, you know, when it got hot. Did I want to be in that hammock at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Absolutely not. What the bug is. No what? But you know, we've got to be able to adapt. That's the whole thing in a bushcraft world. Can we adapt? It's hard to find, okay, can I go to 57? Today it was 91, 92, 106 heat index here with 80-some percent humidity. Yeah, I don't need much gear to that. I can get by. I mean, a bug net will get you by in an emergency overnight. Mm-hmm. Just get bugs off of you. Uh, I got a pretty good – I had a chuckle in there. Uh, Joey, Joey says Mountain House. Oh, fam. <laughs> I got a kick up Mountain House salad. There you go, man. I, I was cracking up. Uh, it was, uh, mm-hmm. it, you know, 78 in, her, in Florida. Uh, yeah, Pam was saying about does it change if you canoe? It does, you know, because now I got conveyance, I don't have to tote it. Uh, but still, do I want to be encumbered? I mean, a kayak ain't got a lot of storage space, and so I need something I can be small and compact. And this bag idea, I think, would be perfect. I want it to be something that when I get to where I'm going, I can take it off and do it. Because a lot of times you don't want to camp right next to the water. Skeeters a certain time of year or gators or whatever down my point of place. I may have to come from and then portage up here to the top of the hill or something to actually find a decent campsite. Maybe too swampy down here next to the water. So having my gear in a small uh, knapsack type deal, even though it's ultralight type deal, will get me up there. Um, and it it needs to be something that can take a wedding, and that's that's one of the reasons I want I, why I eventually do make the bag. I want the bag to be waterproof or be able to take a pretty good splash. You know, um, I don't know about it, y'all, but I've had it where I've had a bag like that, and it just get a bucket and down deluge. And that bag start holding water, you know, so it's got to be waterproof or at least water resistant. Um, I had an Alice pack one time with the uh, liner open inside it was the flat down and it went to leaking and we were doing about an eight or nine mile hike and it was just pouring the whole time. There were times you felt like somebody just had a fire hose on you. Um, and I got tireder and tireder and about seven miles in the mud uh we just decided we just had to just stop and whenever i sat down the pack i bet two gallons of water came out of that pack where it captured water and i'm actually all my gear is sopping wet now and it's flooding so it's got to have some way of closing it up even if it's just going to be tied to that tree over there i want to make sure that it's going to be dry when i get back to my gear I know, Dean, you're texting me on my phone, brother. My, I'm using my phone as a camera right now, so I won't answer you on that. But that's cool. I'll look at this stuff later, Dean. Uh, but, yeah, we, we tested the, the Blackbird Haversack for carrying water. This is a waterproof canvas. We wanted to carry water in an emergency. Uh, but yeah. we don't want the water in there when our gear's in there. You know, that's what the outside's water for. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're talking about this, this uh, what 
we're talking about the older Niger, that's what kind of we coined it right now. Uh, just, uh, you know, we want the waterproof one, but the, remember, it's going to morph to the bag. You, you know, it, it's the, the haversack's going to morph, morph to this for we can get in and out of the camp, drop the big bag, and now we've got two, and we want it to carry good. And that's what Blackie's really been working on. It You can kind of see it like that. Something like that, where the habitat becomes like the top flap for this. So here would be my 10 C's, my regular habitat ready to go. This would be then the camping gear carried in here, like this. Rough idea. This is going to change a little bit. I had originally thought about hooking it up here differently, and a lot of you said make it where just a regular blackbird hooked to it. So I'll put connection points where the strap of the blackbird can be run through and anchor this to it so it becomes integral. I also want it so in route, you know, if I need to get into the inner bag, I can just flip this out of the way and get into this bag without having to, you know, completely unwrap it or anything. So I want it as a flap. Yeah, that's kind of where we're going with right there, you know. Uh, and that's what, uh, uh, you know, that's kind of what we're going for. In the same style, the same look, the same bulletproof gear, you know, yes, I understand about the weight factor. I don't carry the weight I used to. But because of my situation getting in and out, if I have to stay at night, I need my comfort. Remember, we all talk about smoothing it out in the woods. I'll take a little bit extra weight, not walk as far, and be a lot more comfortable. I mean, I'd love to have my full hammock with me. You, you know, I mean, dead of summer, you just need a hammock and a bug net and the tarp, and I can get by through there. And we got to keep the smoothing factor up. We're all getting older in this game, you know? And so that's what we're looking for. Uh, Edward said, my two Dyneema bags are little stuff uh, for little stuff. Uh, I thought because of weight, I changed uh, tarps because of weight. And, and I agree with you. I, I, I've got a lot of friends that are ultralight. They're uh, through hikers, Appalachian Trail. I mean, we call them gram weenies or weight weenies. These guys really fight on it. And I agree with that stuff. Uh, but when you look at their dining and stuff, somebody walk the Appalachian Trail, uh, you might get, if it takes you eight months to walk the trail, most of his gear was pretty much wore out when you get there. Me and Blackie's not walking the Appalachian Trail. We're, we're lucky to walk, I'm lucky to walk a mile in the world. But, uh, you know, we use conveyance canoes side by side, whatever, and then we can carry a lot more gear. But we still need to get away from side by side where it won't cross or won't go. Some of my fishing holes are deer hunting time. We want to set up a canvas tarp and do an overnighter just to get away. Yeah, that could be a mile off the road or 500 miles off the road. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're just trying to find that mid-pack. I haven't had a lot of thought on this because I can load up a full ruck, but who wants to carry the full ruck all the time, like you said? Uh, it sits at camp most of the time. All right, well, let's look at this now. We've already talked about being able to attach something like axes, buck saws, shovels uh, to the outside of it, a grail, something like that. Underneath, you know, we definitely want connections underneath. Um, that opens up where I could put a bigger sleeping bag or I could put a bigger tarp and a protected sleeve into it. I could also carry something long, you know, like a took down fishing rod could be put vertical or horizontal, etc. Um, I like on the front of the bag, uh, when you flip the flap up, I like anchor points there because if I'm going to carry a hatchet or an axe or a big kukri on it, on the bag where it's not going to ride on my belt, but it's going to ride on that, I prefer it there for access to it. So that I get to it first. Because let's walk through it. You get out of your car at the trailhead or at the edge of the woods, whatever. You're going to put this gear on. On your belt is going to be your knife. Probably on your belt or some such way you're going to have your water canteen or whatever or easy access. Yes, I can be hooked to this pack if you want to. But you're probably going to need water in route. When you get to your campsite, and it's not a pre-established campsite, you're probably going to have to clear some. That's when the silky saw or the hatchet or the kukri or the whatever machete comes into play. 
So I want that on the outside of the bag because I hadn't cleared this yet, right? So I'm going to hook my pack up to a tree, pull that cutting tool, in my case, two tree, and I'm going to clear out my campsite. Going to make tomahawk improvements, we used to call it, and open it up. All right, now I pull out my hammock. I put my hammock up. Then I get my tarp up. I figure out this is going to be my cook area over here. My food's going to remain in that pack, probably, to keep it off the ground, away from the bugs. It's going to be tied up on that tree. Um, my haversack now comes off for me to do my scouting, my crafts, and etc. All that's there ready to go. On the bottom of it, I then want some attachment point, because that's got to be the bulky stuff. If it's heavy and it's bulky, I want it close to me and low center of gravity. I don't want something heavy way up on top of my head, like in a backpack. I see a lot of guys wanting to put a big roll up here, and that never works for me. It always makes me want to do this. You know, I want it down low near my hips, so that as I walk, it's a little bit of shift and not a big shift, which tires you out faster. Um, I do want the two straps. I want shoulder straps on this to where I can hook a chest if I need it to take the pressure off of the shoulders, make breathing a little easier because down here in my heat, and again, we're talking about a summer type bag. Because if we roll over in the winter where we need winter gear, out the rut sack becomes the dominant. In the dead of winter, then we're into the backpack, which is a much bigger, like a 65 liter are bigger because it's big bulky clothing, big under quilts for hammocks. That's, you know, we, me and Dan go camp out in January up on mountains and stuff. And you need big stuff for that. That's that's a, that's a, a lot of that stuff you can't carry in when we're getting below zero temperatures. It's pretty yeah. tough to carry all that in. Uh, yeah. There's a pretty good comment. Uh, number one, David asked, you know, uh, uh, where to go? Uh, what's the capacity of your blackbird? Where to check out? I don't have. We don't have a leader count on that. I don't have a leader count on it. I can give you a rough idea of the size. I think it's about. Uh, I think it's about 14 inches square. You know, if I was going to guess, okay, guess I'd say about 10 liters. I'm guessing, guys. So I know what a 25 liter pack is, and that's not quite half. So I call it about a 10 okay. liter a haversack. Now, if we go by that same idea, um, weight, okay, I'm looking for overall weight of the haversack plus the camping gear to be around 15 pounds or less, preferably less. Now, with my German canvas. Uh, Alpine bag that I used before I got my uh, camp craft rucksack, my pack fully outlated, um, set up for a three to five day camp out, ran about 16 pounds. So I can get my weight down, you know, I just don't carry a lot of gear. But there again, that comes into experience of what you need. Um, yeah. I like multitasking gear, so I don't have to tote too much of it. Okay, Glenn, Glenn brought a point. He says, I think uh, a bag the size of modified French F1 with the attachment to the Blackbird haversack is the answer. Ha haversack serving as the top flap on the F F1. You're right, Glenn. That's exactly what we're going for. We just want to kind of modernize it and see what you guys are looking for. Like I said, it, when we build these packs, they might not be for everybody. We're trying to get it as, as best we can get it where we can – adjust and change for people's different likes. Some people carry just a saw. Some people call it an ax. Some people carry a tomahawk. Some people carry a cooker. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? So we're trying to... Some people you know, want have it all over. That's cool, too. It's just not my thing, but I understand that. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do is help you guys out, help us out, make bulletproof uh, very good gear. And that's how come, you know, this come about is... Because after we got up the, the multi bag, you guys know it's been sold out. We're trying to get them back in now. Uh, you know, we got a lot of comments after it was designed. You, you know what I'm saying? So now we're, we're throwing it to you guys to say, hey, you know, what do you guys like? What do you guys like? You know, I've had another comment. You know, I like the frame. I did the plastic frame. Can we go to that? We don't know yet. But 
it's it's we're dumping all this <laughs> in the bag on stew pot and we're gonna see what comes out of it. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we're taking look at that and that is a viable idea. You know, ultimately I'm building me a bag for me. Um but at the same time, if it's I want it in pulp, so if it's a bag that you would want, all of you, you know, um, because if I, you know, when I designed my haversack, my Blackbird, I designed it with what I wanted in me and my experience. And then I showed it, offered it, and people, I got really good feedback, and I greatly appreciate it. We're, we just sold out Run 7. Uh, which is 350 bags in a year. That's a lot of haversacks. And so I, that tells me I come up with good design. That a lot of people do like similar things like I do. And so I wanted to make this next bag, this next step. But I'm not just making it for me. That'd be just easy. I'd make it for me. But I want to put your comments into it. I want to put your input. Like, okay, a frame. That's possible. Let me look at it, see if there's a frame like that could be incorporated or make it where it can function with and without the frame. Just like the Alice. The Alice can run with or without a frame, man. Without. Yeah. This is, that's why we're feeding on you guys. I mean, uh, uh, well, you guys move my comments. <laughs> I'm getting a ton of comments. Uh, da, 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 where'd I go, man? Oh, Rob says, so basically a 20 liter type pack with a haversack on the top flap. Exactly, Rob. That's exactly what we're going for. Uh, we wanted as high quality as, as, the, as the Blackbird Haversack, uh, but we wanted universal fit, you know, because remember, guys, all packs are not created equal. You know that. I mean, look at my size versus Blackie size. There's just our length of our backs are different and the width of our backs. Uh, and that's why we're trying to, you know, when when he approached me with this idea, so why don't we throw it out there and see what you guys like, you know, like I said, this is a melting pot. There's no bad suggestions out here, guys. We're we're not saying that's it. We're not using your idea. We don't care. It's all bringing this in the, in the pot, you, you know. So I, don't get mad if I read your comments because they're coming by pretty quick. But remember, man, your suggestions kept here. This, this is we did this live show for us to be interactive with you guys, and I'm trying to keep up on the comments. So bear with me. <laughs> they're going pretty quick. You know, what What you need, what do you want? If I told you, okay, starting with your haversack, what additional gear would you like to carry along with that haversack? And then let's design a bag to carry that gear. And that, that's kind of what I started the channel with. You know, what do we carry? And we're going to, we're going to put stipulations on it. It's a 48-hour bag. This ain't a seven hour, seven day bag. It's a 48 hour bag. We're going to do a deer hunt. We're going to, we're going to get off the four by fours, the side by sides. We're going to walk in a little bit. We're going to do an overnight or maybe possibly 48 hours. So we all know we discuss our 10 C's. We're going to need uh, uh, the container, the combustion device, the cutting device, uh, some kind of uh, cover element. Huh? Cover element. Yeah, tarp. cover your tarp. And now you're going to put me to the wall and try to remember my five C's. But <laughs> I'm, I'm watching everything going on. So I understand that. And I see, even when I go to these events, everybody brings their pack in. And that pack sits somewhere near them. And they're, and they're walking away from the pack. Well, I need to come back and get that. I need to come back. Well, we're going to do, we did a tracking class down in the river, you know, and everybody left for gear back. I did too. I'm guilty, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and if we'd have gotten an emergency, somebody fell and cut herself, guess where my tourniquet was? It was in my haversack up there at camp. We've got to lighten our haversacks for we can uh, keep them on us at all times. And, you know, it's our grab bag. Grab it and go. Uh, we can get by and get back to camp. We'll be fine. So I know it's I'm kind of harping on that. But that's So a 48-hour bag, but I need to drop and go. So what, what are we carrying? We're carrying an axe. We're carrying a saw. Uh, uh, we got to have containers or cooking vessels. Some, a lot of us carry small stoves. You know, a lot of places I go to the creek can't have a fire. So now I got to carry my stove. You know, I don't want to carry my stove in my house. You know, my little gas burner sitting right there, actually. But uh, you know what I'm saying? So we're carrying a stove, <clears throat> extra pots, containers. Uh, what am I missing? Uh, clothing, an extra set of clothes, mm -hmm. and then the food. 
I can leave that back in camp, you know. Gray Wind pointed out, he said, basically like a uh, the World War II pass, or like a Boy Scout, you know, yes, that's really the size I'm going for. Um, and pointing out of me putting the loops on all the sides so you can make attachment points, you could easily make a blanket roll roll around the top of this thing. So if you want to carry a bigger tarp and a blanket rolled up, you could put it as a yoke on it, like the old World War II Marine Corps pack, or like the Boy Scout Yucca Pack. It's a similar idea. The Yucca Pack's only real problem that I have, and I've got a vintage one, um, is the straps are so short, because it was meant for kids. You know, the bag was great. The straps were the weakness to it. Um, and I like the idea, and, and the point I have against the Alice, medium that i liked about the alice tropical or small was the depth of the bag was not very deep so it kept the load close to your back the problem i have with the alice pack is it opens up so big and the more you pile in it the further the center of balance gets away from your back well the more you got to walk once over to put the balance up on top if i stood loaded it up and stood straight up it would bow me backwards you know, and I'm five foot ten, two hundred pounds. Uh, long time. You start walking hunched over. The Alice pack, that was its detriment. With the World War II bag or the Yucca pack, etc. That size, and you're right, Gray. When right, that's where we're going. It keeps it compact. All I want in here is what I need to camp and food. I got everything else in that Alice in that haversack. I can survive with that Halifax. I'm adding a little comfort. Well, on the Alice pack, my favorite pack. I still have it. That's the one I had when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I got the frame with it. The the biggest thing I hated on a on an Alice pack, it's a bucket. And everything that you need is in the bottom of that bucket all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It had three pockets on the outside, which was the food and stuff. But your pack got to stay there. If I needed my rain gear, I always pack it in last. You know what I'm saying? And it was just, it's a bucket. I like to have her sack because all my primary stuff's there. Then all my clothes and stuff is in the rut or in the overnight, the overnight bag we're talking about. Or the overnight. Well, I ran the, um, the tropical bag, which is a small Alice. Okay. Think kind of like the size of a yucca bag. Okay. Remember the old big boxes of Tide you used to be able to get? Remember yeah. that, man? All right. We would get them big boxes of Tide. If you would pour out the top of it till it's empty, I would get an empty box and I would cut the top off of it. That would just slide in to that bag. That was my liner because it was waxed cardboard. Okay? In the bottom of it, of course, it was cleaned out. In the bottom of it went a t-shirt, fresh pair of socks, rolled up, fresh pair of underwear, into a tube. I put three of those across the bottom, and then I had a space over here where the bath cloth, uh, the container with the soap went, etc. Then I dropped down a thin piece of cardboard. On top of that went food, do -do 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 -do, across it. Thin piece of cardboard, and it was my everyday grab gear, ba 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 ba, on top. I, and on the very, very top went whatever my lunch was going to be that day because we're going to start out in the morning, remember. I've already eaten breakfast. You always feast before you go. And I'd go out and hike. When I stopped for lunch and I flipped open the flap, there on top was my lunch ready to go. When I got to camp and I hung my pack up and I took that out, that first row right there was my hammock, my tarp, my whatever, sleeping gear. All that came out. My food is the next layer down. The clothing at the very bottom, I'm only going to dig out once a day. So my dirty underwear, socks, T-shirt got rolled up, put in, and replaced tonight. And I dropped the thing in, put my food back in. So it was a layered system the way I worked it, instead of being one big bucket. Well, and that's what we all did. It yeah. just never fails. It seems like, okay, now I need something at the bottom of that bucket. You have to stay very organized in a bucket style. Yeah. Back like it. You do. Uh, there was a good comment. William, William uh, Drew, uh, he said, I need to figure out a room for a glucose meter, insulin pens, and medications. Yeah, we need somewhere, 
you know, somewhere that's accessible quick, you know, especially yeah. people who's got medical needs. You, you know what I'm saying? You got to keep your pills uh, handy, you, you know. Uh, that's part of this consolidation, what we're talking about on this bag, is trying to figure out what pockets we need. If we make accessible po or accessory pockets that you can order separate, if you don't want them, good. If you want them, good. We can have another Molly type bag for that kind of stuff. You know, a little med, little med kit. You know, uh, a church a friend of mine did that. He had he was insulin dependent, and so he got one of the small uh, thermos food containers. Okay, he would put it in the fridge overnight. The next morning, we're about to show off. He would put his insulin into it, seal it up, and put that in his pack. It would normally keep his insulin cool forty eight hours. We were gone. You know, maybe a little bit of ice, not a lot. But keeping it buried in the pack insulated it from the atmosphere. He would only open it when he had to to get the insulin out and do his injection and immediately seal it back up. And usually he was able to carry his insulin that way fairly successfully. He was pretty severely insulin dependent. And um, for several years, there, me and him camped together, and it was because he knew I could watch him and tell that his, you know, if he started getting a little off and he didn't realize I was there, I knew what to do. And uh, so he was able to do quite a bit of camping. And then he, you know, he had to move off somewhere. So somebody else is toting his insulin for him now, not me. <laughs> uh, there's a good one Woodchuck brought up. It says, what about the large size Blackbird with a zip off lid pouch and its own shoulder straps? We kind of talked about that, about, you know, using zippers out in the woods. YKK zippers are top of line. That's what we're running on the, yeah. on the haversack. And, that's this is the stuff we're adding to the stew pot right now. Where you guys are helping us build this, man. Yeah, you so. could do that. It would be easy, relatively easy to do it. Um, to scale it up and just have like an abbreviated flap, um, and then the attachment points for the straps, and then using the zipper to be able to take it on and off with. Because um, all we need is a good attachment point. That's it. So, yeah, it is feasible to do it that way. And I did think about that, about a big YKK, just unzip it, you know, two zips, zip it, you're done. You know, or one long one across the top. Yeah. Um, because once it's in route, um, I'm go. I'm, on mine, I don't know about the final production run, but you don't want a flat bouncing, you know. And so I'm going to have, uh, using the, the toggle, and the Prusik that I do, you know, where it runs through itself for the adjustable guy line, I was going to run that up the middle, top to bottom, so I could just pull it up tight. Whatever the load is, it's not going to bounce. When I get yeah, well, I get pulled out. CJ on there, he just did. He cut a couple flaps uh, placed with shock cord could be take place in the pocket, and you're not limited to size. So exactly. shock cord would give you a little bit of adjustment on that. And a lot of guys like to use uh, – um, not shot bungee cords for going yeah. around trees and stuff like that. So it would be a way of incorporating it into the pack. Go from bottom, top, and hook, or around the pack and hook it, and uh, keep everything from bouncing. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of multitask, and I ain't got no problem, you know, incorporating a part of my shelter <laughs> system into my pack system. Yeah, Sh Shasta said the accessory bags. Even if detachable, take you away from your original concept you started to discuss. And you're right. But right now, there's no rules where we can take this. We're going to go to Pluto and back, and, mm -hmm. and we're just a discussion. There's nothing set in stone today, but this is just an idea. That's why we're relying on you guys to throw it at us. So, yeah, we, we've got our basic concept. Is it worth suing extra bags? Is it worth changing up with zippers and stuff like that. It's just, it's just, there's no rules on a discussion tonight. I want to throw in my two cents with William. Uh, my uncle had uh, diabetes too. We rode motorcycles on long hauls. What we found out was amazing that if you take a frozen bottle of water, you know, one of Walmart bottles, he put his insulin in there, wrapped it in a good towel and put it in his saddlebag. He was shocked that we, we could ride eight or 10 hours and never lose that ice out of that bottle. Mm -hmm. So it's just a little tip I want to throw in there with you that you can do that with, uh, you know, a decent towel, 
uh, keep your insulin in there and with that water bottle. You don't want to freeze it, but you want to keep it really chilled. And it, it was 100 degree days out there. We were riding up with fire glass and, and aluminum bags on our bikes. So give me an idea. We could hold it for at least eight or 10 hours easy. I, 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 oh, I get the line. Line. Now, what you're bringing up there along that line. Now, food stuffs. Uh, I brought milk to camp before in a thermos, in a pack. Put it in the uh, uh, freezer for about 20 minutes, open 20, 30 minutes. She, well, first chill down that thermos real good, and I put my milk into it, leave it up there about five, ten minutes in the freezer, and then seal it up. And the next morning, still have cold milk. To bring out. That's when people hate you when you bring out your little bowl of your Cheerios or whatever, and you're pouring cold milk, and they're having to eat whatever, you know. Uh, or How'd whatever. you get that milk this far back here, Black? You out spoiling, man. It's 110 degrees today. Yeah, it is. And I got cold milk. <laughs> so, uh, carrying a thermos like that. For you coffee drinkers, here's a trick. Um, we would take the coffee can, and we'd take another container, we'd dump all the coffee out. And then we'd spoon back in a layer about one finger thick on the bottom, and we'd put three eggs, and we'd pour coffee on top of it and kind of shake it and everything so it, you know, the egg is not laying sideways, the egg is standing straight up. And then we'd add coffee until the eggs were completely buried. And then we put three more eggs and completely bury them. Well, you could get half a pound of coffee and six eggs into one can. Well, the coffee it protected the eggs, so shock therapy, it didn't break. Well, in the morning, you're going to make coffee first, right? So I dip out coffee. Now, there's my three eggs for having breakfast, you see. And then you wad up a rag and stuff it in the can so it didn't bounce up and down. And the next set of eggs get loose. You get two days worth of eggs and coffee out of one can that way. Yeah, and that, and that see, these are good ideas. I mean, um, uh, Gray Wind said, uh, you know, would you use military style buttons instead of zippers? Buttons are field repairable. He's actually right. You uh, zippers get muddy. You know, zippers can get muddy. They can get plugged with stuff, and they can fail. I thought about using toggles. Uh, mounting a toggle to the back of the overnight bag and then coming off the straps of the Blackberry Habitat with two loops. So simply just, you know, thread it over the toggle so the center side the toggle is stationary sideways. So you fade it over one side, put it over the other side, and it stays centered here and would hold it in place that way. Those wouldn't come apart easily, wouldn't come loose easily in just standard usage. But the toggle is basically a button. It's just a stem. It's just a big, wide button that doesn't unbutton. Yeah. And that's the same thing. Got to make it easier. We get to camp late. I got to be able to take my fingers, click, click, get the bag off, you know, start unloading. I mean, we've all arrived at camp late. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. And so, uh, uh, I, David, or uh, where'd I go, Randy? Uh, yeah, Randy thinks the haversack with a, with a front pocket with it on the flap, but the overnighter would have a large flap to go for both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we have to look at that, Randy. Well, now, that's one of the things that when you think of it, the flap, which would be the haversack, and there may be a, a thinner flap underneath it that's what the haversack is hooking to, okay? It would protect the front of the overnighter bag. So if I had an ax under here, hooks like we're talking about or something it would protect that once i got it to camp and it's hanging up on the tree that would keep water or water from getting into the bag so it would be protected hanging there you know um is it going to become the food bag yeah in certain places you're wanting to hang up a food bag right well once i get to camp and i take my camping gear out of that bag that bag can now become a food bag and i'm hanging a tree you know, run me a line over a limb and take it on up there. Uh, a lot of you guys live in bear country or places where you got problems. Um, I'm down here where we've got bears, but they're not a problem. They're still so shy. Um, North Florida actually did a bear hunt two years ago because they had so many nuisance bears. But uh, you, you really got to work hard to see one. So we don't have to worry about that so much down there. But what we have to worry about is coons and possums. You know, and so sometimes, yeah, it would be an advantage to take your, your food and hang it up over here and keep 
a bugs two critters away from it. And so that this overnighter bag then turned into your food bag. And you could easily hang it up because your haversack would still have all your stuff. And, and your haversack in an emergency in the middle of the night, I still have all my gear with my haversack within an arm's reach. Exactly. Uh, I got in the uh, delinium down there at your place with the dad on fire ants. Remember, got into my food. Yeah. And made a mess of everything. Uh, I didn't think they would get inside a plastic chew a hole in a, a cereal bar. And I couldn't believe there's millions of them in that cereal bar. Uh, didn't see it until it's too late. So keeping your stuff off the ground is a big factor, you know. And I actually had an aluminum can. I didn't get the lid shut on the whole way. That was my fault. But there you go. It's another one. Uh, uh, Randy says, can I send some, you guys some illustrations on some suggestions? Yeah, hey, Randy. You, you can get with Blackies on Facebook, on Messenger. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Messenger. Sure, man. Hit us up because, yeah, we really need a whiteboard. What we're doing, you know, trying to, you guys got to bear with us. We need to draw it up for you. Uh, you know, I, I like the bare bones, uh, uh, you know, the Molly equipment. You know, I like that because you can hang stuff on here. I mean, the Molly system is is great system. Uh, we're still looking for bulletproof stuff. Inside of the overnight bag, like I've done in my haversack, I want to have in one of the corners of the bag, I want a loop. I'll tell you why. That's the perfect place to hook that first aid kit or your car keys on a cabiner or whatever. So it don't, like you said, it goes to the bottom of your pack. Whatever it is, always got to find that. Yes, you know, the haversack has got a zipper pouch for that to be able to grab. But on any bag I've got, I always put a loop somewhere near the top on one side. Usually it's on the left. So when I run my hand in there and pitch dark, I know. So a flashlight can easily be attached to that. A lot of times I'll put my car keys right there. Yep, go ahead. See yeah. that? I know where it's at all the time, 100%. It's going to be inside no matter what. I brought it out, but usually this stays inside my bag all the time. I know it's always going to be in grabs. If it's pouring down rain in the middle of the night and I absolutely need to get a fire started, that's my backup right there. Mm -hmm. well, you know, we're getting a little older and we have medicines we need, you know. Um, in my hammock, that's in the little thing above me. On my pack, it's going to be somewhere I can grab it without having to dig for it. Um, and I, what I normally do on mine, and I'll incorporate this and this, either a grommet, or simply a sewed loop where you could hook a cabiner or you could tie a piece of cord so you could anchor that piece of gear that you got to get, you know, a first aid kit. Uh, if you don't want to do that, I, a lot of times I like to carry a knife like this Hella knife that I started carrying in my haversack so it stands vertically in the bag. I just run through the belt loop, a little soft shackle through that loop, so when I hold the bag up, it's automatically standing up. When I flip it up, I reach there and grab. I know where that's at. It's always going to be there. Um, it's those little things like that that's going to make your life so much better. Having an anchor point like yeah. that. Uh, you know, Woodchuck, he, he's bugging out on us. And uh, thanks for joining us, Woodchuck. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it says, I run an Osprey Fairport 70 for maximum comfort. I had a piggyback day pack. Would be good to look at how they use how they use zippers, as we said, mm -hmm. which is good. We need to look at that, Blackie, for that thing. CJ, you know, what about totally detachable straps that use clamps to connect? The strap itself can be a variable tool as well. Yep, a Blackie mm -hmm. strap on his half set comes halfway off, and we've used that. It's a storage container. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's something else we're going to look into. Guys, all these comments, I'm going to go back in there. Me and Blackie's going to have probably a few hours on the phone to oh, start I'm this this. and driving this up. Uh, I'm going to repeat it again. If you guys got ideas, hit us up on Facebook Messenger. Send us, you know, draw it up for us. What you like, you know. It, it, this is this is going to be everybody's bag. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody got some input. Uh, Shaster said, yeah, guys, enjoy your cold milk and Cheerios while I have bacon, eggs, and hot coffee. Okay, Shaster, we're the same way, man. Uh, we like it. Mike, Sim, uh, Mike Simmons, what about the Blackbird Haversack on a ladder frame 
with the overnight bag about the size of a military cam bag underneath. Yeah. It's kind of what we're going for, Mike. Yeah, I see what you're saying there. Yeah, you can yeah. Just, you just stretch it out. Like I was talking about earlier when I used to wear my uh, Y harness and I had a butt pack, a space and a butt pack. It made it long and narrow, you know, and I could put gear into it. And that's a very viable idea of some sort of frame, uh, kind of like a, a Pack Nelson, you know, type thing or Trapper, Trapper Nelson frame or some sort of frame where they stack one on top of the other. You could change it around. Yeah, that'd be viable. Um, I was seeing a, a pack not long ago that a guy was talking about, and it was a, basically a big butt pack, you know, within a frame. And so the frame sat on top of it, you had four places you could attach it on that frame. So if I wanted high, low, middle, whatever, it just real simple, hooked on. Um, and then something like that is viable. I mean, have that and have your haversack above it. Now I got, I can run a yoke, I can run a big sleeping bag, I can run a big tarp, I could run a jerry can if I want to carry it. You know, you get into where you can carry anything then. And so then all you need is a given size bag, given volume, that would handle the camping gear and food, and then a haversack on top. Yeah, that's actually very viable. And yeah. if you took everything off of it, and it was a strong enough pack frame, like a Trapper Nelson, but I then turn the pack frame sideways and have something to sit on, you know, or a lean back against a tree or a platform to process or do whatever. Yeah, it, it, it becomes a viable component. Uh, it, I task. Edward said, what cost are you looking at? We have not an idea on cost. Right there yet. We're worrying about features. Let's get a good bag design. Let's get a bag that everybody agrees is, is where we want to go. True, we can't fit everybody's ideas. That's just that's just life. Yeah, but, but we're trying to make a solid design, and then we'll talk about getting something built, yeah. and then we'll talk about price. Right now, we want function. We want function of the bag. Then we'll streamline it, you know, and go from there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Randy said D rings instead. You know, grounds to help keep it waterproof. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. let me see. Uh, Randy said thinking of a. Uh, with a heloton text poncho attached to the swagman roll. One piece yeah. of grommets and the other has toggles. They fit together nicely. Same basic concept, what we're talking about. Lock it through, exactly. Yeah, They're a good idea. Uh, good, well, good information. Uh, uh, maybe uh, add a molly to the top of the pack, uh, moving on, of the haversack to hang a roll, hang on a Roy craft, then put the auxiliary bag on the bottom support. Exactly. You could run a Roy Craft pack frame. You know, make your own pack frame. Uh, mm -hmm. We could do it that way. Uh, you know, uh, man, this this is endless. This is now that that you know, see so, something like that would appeal to me because I'm a do it yourself. I mean, we're bush crafters. We're supposed to be able to take what we got and make what we need. That's one of the reasons I'm leaning toward using soft shackles and bushcraft zip ties for attachment. If I have an attachment hooked to the bag. Well, then I can create whatever one-to-one -one connect for whatever piece of gear I want. Well, how about if we came up with a pack and then we came up with a frame design that you can build? So you can build the frame at a locally sourced product, either stuff from the hardware store, lumberyard, or you cut and make it out of this size sticks, etc. And you have the pack then to hook to it. That's even better. Like that Roy Croft frame, great idea because I hook it here and hook it there and have the same thing. Yeah. As long as I got the bag to handle the camping gear. Yeah. If, the bag the has, if the bag has, excuse me, the loops in it where we can just slide sticks or PVC, yeah. whatever, conduit, whatever you want to make it out of. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, David's bugging out on us because I know he gets up 4.30 a.m. Uh, Thomas made a good uh, uh, comment. He says it's off topic, topic, but he enjoyed my Buck One Ten video. I, hey man, I had to the plug out there. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. It, it just went up at six o'clock today, so pretty happy. And you guys, if you don't notice, 
I put out a really good video. I got to get my plugs in here, guys. I put a really good video up on a tent stake trick. If you haven't seen it, please like it and share it and subscribe it. It's it's going really good for me right now, but it's a heck of an idea. It's, it's so easy. It's like, why didn't I think of that? And I, I thought about it when I was a kid. Uh, I actually showed it to uh, James Bender, Waypoint Survival, and he just lost it. He said, I can't believe how easy that is. Nobody thought about it. I've been using it for years because I'm a trap line, to be honest with you. Uh, but check out that too. So I had, sorry, I got off topics, guys. <laughs> I had to get my plugs yeah. in there. Uh, pretty happy with my videos. I'm getting good. I told you my videos are coming back out. The editing was killing me. Okay. Uh, we know, he, but, but that's exactly what to go back, you know, can we, because the problem with pack frames, because I'm six foot eight, I'm that wide. Mm -hmm. The problem with pack frames is they don't fit. Really funny that I run a meaty mouse pack. And I don't. Uh, I can run the medium frame. If I go with the larger frame, I don't like it. Uh, we're all built different. So if we can come up with make your own frame, this will slide together with PVC, whatever, or a U.S. military frame, you know, the new plastic style, that we can attach it to that. So you guys have the best of both worlds. Uh, we made it where it could attach to an outback frame, which are readily available in the surplus market. If it we could make the same thing where it would attach to a Roy Croft type or you make it frame. I really like that idea because I, that incorporates you into the process. I like it because we're all, we're all different. We know what we like, mm -hmm. you know, and and that's, that's back, you know, going to your bushcraft traits, you know, uh, I mean, if you want to see something, I want to plug James Bender again. He's doing the 17th century series. Uh, you look at his pack frame he built. He, he bent the frame around. I mean, quality stuff, guys. And and if we want to do it that way. But can we have one built that we're out woodsman or we're out bushcraft? Can I build the frame? Or can I adopt it to the U.S. military pack frame? Mm -hmm. I want it both. I want it all. I made a comment a long time ago about a nice sheep. I said, I just need to do everything. That's It's just that easy. We need this pack to kind of do everything. Without getting it, oh, we could do that and weigh 45 pounds. <laughs> you well, know, we we need to do this. What it's work out. Design is what it's, what it's, its purpose is to be a 48 hour pack, you know, a, a add on to a haversack for comfort to be able to make a more comfortable camping experience. Um, could I put it onto an Alice, Frank? Yeah. Could I put it onto a pack frame I build myself? Yes. But I run it without any frame and just put straps on it. Yes. You know, that's my thing. I want straps attached to it. Make the straps generous enough so that whatever I'm going to incorporate, could it then be used to anchor it to an Alice frame and still work? Yes. Could I then put it on a Roy Croft frame and maybe cross the straps or whatever? Yes. Um, when I designed that Blackbird Haversack, I intentionally wanted a very long strap because I want to be able to be adapted. Yes, I can carry a bucksaw blade inside that strap or other tools, a file or whatever inside that strap. But at the same time, if I let the strap out on the bag, I can then hook and flip it over my back. Okay, it's now a knapsack type deal. I can run it through my belt loops and it becomes a thigh bag with a the back tie to the leg because I'm doing fly fishing or whatever. And I want it attached to me in case I go into a drink, um, but I don't want it on my hip for whatever reason. Uh, I wanted it to be adjustable like that. I want it to be multi-option. So, and, and you have a video explaining all this, guys. If you go back to this playlist, look at this haversack. He'll show you how to wear the whole thing. And, that, and that's what uh, uh, Badger uh, Kadar just said. You need to use the shoulder straps on the back. Uh, I'm not sure how he spelled or understand that. Yeah, we're, we're here. we want to use the shoulder straps. Uh, Buckeye, hey, Buckeye, she's greetings from Ohio. Woodcraft, I'm picturing design like the M1941 Marine rucksack hmm. and the haversack used in World War II, both bags piggyback one another and we're kind of going back to that guys because it worked so good mm -hmm. one thing blackie's a little older than me and but we all come up using the surplus stuff we couldn't afford really nice backpacks and stuff uh and so we used half this gear didn't we blackie i mean oh, yeah. 
and I think that's what we're trying to reinvent that system and bring it up to the 20th century is what we're trying to do. You know, with better material, uh, Molly stuff, you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, what, what was always kind of funny to me is that military pack, like they're talking about, the classic one you see in all the war movies, uh, or live footage of them going into Guadalcanal, etc. It's the guys coming down the things to get on the landing craft, and it's this small pack with a horseshoe uh, shelter half going around it. And these, these guys are like five foot six, five foot eight, <laughs> yeah. maybe. These are smaller people than we are back in them days. And, uh, you know, their, their personal kit had to be kept small because you carried so much tactical kit strapped to you, grenades and everything else. So they couldn't have big things. That's in all the militaries. The Alice pack kind of broke that mold. It became a big bag that he put on their backs. But even that, it had to have a frame. It could be a pack frame. You could carry a jerry can on it. Um, we go back to those pieces of gear because they worked and they were functioning within that proper idea you know um in fact i was never lucky enough to get one of the marine corps packs i had a korean nylon version of it at one point uh, i had ten thousand straps on it <laughs> you know what you have to think of what does the strap go to because it was hooked so many different ways um but i like the, the the way it was built had it would carry everything and come back. So many things could be hooked to it, put onto it, put into it, and allow you to carry it. And that was a big advantage. Now, here in our modern times, uh, what are you carrying? Like we've said that, but now you've got something specific you need to carry. So for your health reasons, you've got to carry a big old thermos full of ice to carry your insulin. Okay, well, that'll anchor to this side or anchor to the bottom or anchor over here. Um, I need a frame because I can't carry da 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 da. Okay, we got to have a frame adaptability. Um, I need to be able to carry it without a frame. Okay, I can do that too. You can see y'all's comments are giving us the ideas. We points we've got to hit. We're making an outline of what is this got to fit. It needs to be able to do this and do this. Also do this. Also do this. You know, size somewhere around 20, 25 liters. Because we don't need a big rucksack, we're going ultralight. This is sort of a sort of ultralight, but I don't want to use that word because then you got to get into all that little bit of light fiber. We want something that's durable. I want something that when I take the time to design this and build it, I want to buy it once. You know, <laughs> I want it made out of good quality gear, and I want it to last me forever. Yeah. Uh, that's and Chest rolled up. He says, Blackie, please consider putting double D rings on both sides of your haversack strap with a removable strap. Yeah. Uh, somebody, I thought of that. Yeah. Uh, and I like his comments. Says, and now, classic surplus gear is outrageous price. It is. It was, it was so cheap, man. You could buy a nice pack for eight bucks, you know, five bucks. I mean, they was trying to dump it on the American people to get rid of it. I was picking up uh, jungle fatigue shirts for a dollar a piece. I was picking up the canvas military cover uh, for the canteen with a canteen cup, canteen stove, and a canteen for six or seven bucks. Yeah. I remember buying a whole cook set for six bucks. The whole thing, yeah. six bucks. They're collector's pieces now. Yeah, the knife, fork, spoon was, you know, two bucks for it, you know. Yeah. And, you back and you see the packs are running ridiculous. Uh, the the various pieces of gear um, is just, I mean, something that shocked me the other day. It was a uh, M14 heavy canvas pouch. It was the ammo pouches, right? I used it for a haversack for years, really a fire kit on a strap. And those things are like 25 bucks a piece now because they're, well, yeah, that's 60, 70 years ago. Those were in service. So, yeah, you know. Hey, but, Black, throw, you know. throw a plug in for your uh, surplus store down there. Okay. If you're looking for military surplus and you can't find any where you're at, I've got a really good surplus store and they will ship to you. 
Name of it is Kaufman's Military Surplus. It is in Sampson, Alabama. And give me just a second. I'll give you a phone number even. Um, the phone number. Do, 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 do. There we go. Buckeye, uh, uh, look that up, Black. I want to answer Buckeye's question. Okay, the uh, phone number is 334-898-1770. If you're looking for anything in military surplus, they're the ones to talk to. Tell them Blackie sent you. They'll go hand select it for you. Go ahead. Uh, well, Buckeye Brushcraft will put that up. Uh, so my question is, whatever design you guys come up with, we're still going to uh, use the most recent Blackbird half sack. I don't want to have to buy another one. Absolutely. Exactly. There's yeah. too many out there. There's 350 of these bags out there. We're going to keep that to go. Mm -hmm. uh, if we have to improve the half sack, then that'll be an improvement, but it will still work what we're doing today. Exactly. I'm not changing the Blackbird design. I had initially thought about making it where it was all one bag. And so when you got the bag, you would get the overnight and it would be this slightly different because you remember when I did the first video, I showed where I had cut the flap on it and went to this D-ring so that this would hook differently. So if you bought the bag, it was going to come with one of these haversacks on the top. They can then take off and use it, and this will become a weight belt. But so many of you said, no, could you just make it where the standard one I've already got works? Yeah. yeah I wasn't going to make you buy a separate bag. Yeah. I'm not greedy. I'm not trying to, you know, oh, but wait, there's more. Uh-uh, that's Ron Popeil. That ain't me. Um, you're right. It should incorporate the standard Blackbird on the top of it. It should be also adaptable to anybody else's haversack. So if you had a Pathfinder haversack, and you want to cut the strap on one side where you can run it through the beaners, uh, through the D-rings to hook it, you can do it. You know. Then that, that's what we're trying to do. We're building around the haversack. We're, we're trying to build around the haversack. Uh, I, I think it's comment. Shasta said, I just bought a 60s mess quit kit with a knife, fork, and spoon for over $30. <laughs> that's wow. crazy, man. And And they're bulletproof gear. It is bulletproof gear, but it's getting outrageously priced. And like I said, I love my house pack. I still carry an house pack, but I would like to improve on it. Let's bring it into the you know 20th, 21st century. You, you know, and that's what me and Blackie talk about. Because one thing, the older you get, the we're, we're more tolerant when we're 30 about camping out. We got by with, I don't need that, I don't need that. You know, I'm running around. The older you get, <laughs> we want more function out of our gear. We want bulletproof gear. We want the function out gear. Make it easy. Keep it simple, stupid. That KISS method. Mm -hmm. That's what the haversack works. I have a Pathfinder haversack somewhere right there on that shelf. And I hated it because anything I put in the top of it, when I flipped it open, everything fell out. You yeah. know? So Blackie, he modifies his, puts a zipper in. I said, why are you doing that? You need to build the haversack. And it actually, nothing wrong with that. Pathfinder house. I love it. I bought it. And it, it's great for a real small pack, but anything in the lid. Blackie said, hey, I can modify it. But two things Blackie really did. He Three things. Uh, if you look at the back of the pack, you know, this is so well thought out. It's the subtleties that count. And I, I pointed this out earlier. This, this, Just because Blackie put this on an angle makes it out carry the Pathfinder Black. Now, I'm not here to ridicule Pathfinder Black. It's a nice bag. Get me right. Mm -hmm. But with the, the subtleties here, the quick release here, this attachment point at the bottom, all made it, it just changed this bag. We can use the strap as a carrying device for my extra chokes, whatever we can put up in there because it's a hollow bag. I, I'm not trying to sell the bag here because most of you guys already got this bag. But you understand it's the subtleties that make that make a good bag great. When he put the zipper in the top lid, I freaked out. I was like, absolutely, man. I dumped more crap. Even when you laid your hair sack on the ground, that stuff rolled out when you go to pick it up. So, and that's what we're trying to do with this overnight bag, is we're trying to get them subtleties in there. It's not going to be some state-of-the-art, brand-new, totally funky design. It's we're trying to pick the best of everything to make it function first. We need to function right, you know. I'm a big fan of function and multitask because um, 
And me and William Collins kind of disagreed on that. He said he didn't like the statement until I modified it. And the, the old statement was, the more you know, the less you carry. And he said he didn't agree with that. And he made his points. And I said, okay, well, to my way of thinking, that's not the complete statement. The complete statement is the more you know, the less BS you carry. Um, if I can get this device to do four things, then I ain't got to carry the other three things. So if I can get a haversack to carry on me and allow me to carry a buck saw blade or the choke tooth from a gun, if I can make it into a thigh bag, if I can make it anchor this way, then I don't have to carry that other piece of gear because this will do it. Now, what can I add to this to make it do this job? You know, and making this overnight bag is kind of like where I'm, I'm going with that. I want to take this idea and step it up to carry the camping, the, the, the overnight camping set. So and, we're not encumbered. And I want to add to that, the more you carry, the more you know, the less you carry. But I also think the older you get, the better gear you carry. I think that's a big factor. We're looking for, I'm tired of buying another pack. I'm tired of buying it. I want to buy once, cry once. Yes, his haversack is not really cheap for a haversack. You can get a lot cheaper haversack made out of price the same material for probably half the price. But it was the thought and process of how it carries. Uh, I can't handle a haversack you put on your shoulder to swing back and forth while you're walking. This got a strap. I wear mine up high. I tuck it on my right kidney. It knows it swing forward. If you bend down to pick something up, it don't go flying around your side. That's the thought out we're, what we're looking for. If we can get, if we can even come up with this thing and make it where it's got, everybody's got to be kind of happy with it. And trying to fit everybody's going to be impossible. We know that's like knife handles. Everybody's different. Uh, but if we can make it a bulletproof gear, universal, add on, add off. If you like this, put it on. If you don't like it, take it off. And, but old school too, old school worked, you, you know, but we got to bring it forward. One of the things that I've been kind of playing with, I'm going to have to see it. You know, I'm going to make one and see it. You know, with the shoulder straps at the bottom attached to the pack. And a lot of, and I like, um, I like buckles, but at the same time, a lot of guys like the quick detach plastic buckles. So you can pop loose. Those are going to eventually break, yeah, okay. But at the same time, I've often wondered, what if I took on those that attachment? If I made my left strap where it got to the pack, if it had the female on the top and the male coming from the bottom, and on the other strap, I made it where it was the male and the female coming from the bottom. When I got to where I was going, I'd be able to take the thing off, unsnap both buckles, take my two straps, and lock them together and hang it on a tree. Because it's got the female and the male buckle, right? Click. Yeah. So if I could unhook it, go up in the tree and go click, I ain't even got to have a cord. The, the straps now hooks it to the tree. There you go, guys. You know. Things that nobody that I've seen has thought of you know, is all you got to do is just reverse the buckle, you know, top to bottom. But we always think of, okay, these are the two females and those are the two males. Just reverse it. And so I yeah, can, it's a good or, idea. Or getting into a canoe or getting into an RV, being able to take my shoulder straps and go lock and anchor it in place so it ain't going to go overboard or it ain't going to bounce off. Um, being able to get in my truck you know, and the camper shell in back, be able to take my pack and go click and have it stay in place, not move around while I'm transporting. Well, and he's, he's making a good point on that because if you roll his truck, the bag didn't go throwing out of it. If you rolled your canoe, it didn't go floating down or sink to the bottom. It's still yeah. attached to that big canoe. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's an idea that we, we, we might try to incorporate this into this pack. You know, we might. Uh, Buckeye Bushcrafter makes a good point. Like we just talked about, he's 58 years old. Uh, he's got a pack smart, quality items, thought thoroughly out, makes an outing more pleasurable. It's that simple. It really is. We want to smooth it, but you can't believe, even though I know all the stuff from my buckets, I still drag it all out and go through everything before I leave. Double check all my batteries. Because there's nothing, 
everybody gets frustrated when we forget something, we forget batteries, whatever, you know. And we, and I think that comes with age. I do. I think it does. You know, we don't want to take, you know, piddle around with the dumb stuff. You know, uh, like John said, great idea of working there. Uh, Pam says left or right hand version is great. Uh, I'm trying to keep up. Uh, Ambidextrous. That way yeah. it works either way. And having a bag, and let's look at it in camp. We get there and I take it out. I take out my camping gear. Okay, now I've got the bag. What can I use this bag for once I get to camp? Uh, well, it's going to be in my food storage. All right, what if I've got to travel a pretty good way to go get my firewood? Well, I take my food out of the bag. Now it's a cargo bag to go pick up firewood or to go pick up whatever and load it up or tender or that big fluffy whatever, or, you know, you see what I'm saying? If the bag could be made where it's pretty much waterproof, could I carry water in it? Where well, I've got to carry water pretty good ways. Could I go down here and dunk it in the creek and get two <laughs> gallons of water and bring back to camp? We already did that with the haversack. We were carrying water with the haversack. Did that, yeah. and somewhere at some point, Dan's going to release that footage where I went up to Ohio and he said something about that. We needed water for something. I said, let me use my habitat. And he said, you think it'll carry water? I dumped everything out right quick. I scooped it full of water, and it was just dripping out of one quarter. And I said, yeah, it'll carry water, about a gallon and a half. So you know, put out a fire. I got a bucket. Yeah, put out a fire. What happens if we were on a river, but, you know, river's flood. We're, you know, we're, we're camping up here to get away from high water. It's going to rain all night. But we need water to come up. I mean, do I want to carry water in my haversack? Not really, but it's a possibility. You might have to. And yes, the the bag did leak through the seams, but we didn't carry it. It it, it would hold a gallon and a half of water before you got back to camp pretty easy. And yeah. like I said, you're putting the fire out, especially you know now it's summertime. Uh, you know, and the thing is, it dries quick. These are wax canvas bags, guys. These aren't you know they're they're not the canvas that's going to soak up water like the multi-bag, you know, we want it to soak up water as well. These aren't doing that. So he dumped it over, dumped it out, wiped it out, put his gear back in, and we was gone. So, yeah, I'll release that footage. He knows what I'm going through with editing, and I'm getting <laughs> – it's been a long haul, man. Uh, but uh, so, you know, that's what I'm talking about, guys. I mean, we love, we love the help that you guys give us. We want to give – Guys, this was just a discussion. There was no wrong answers on this thing. There was no, you know, well, I don't like it. You don't like it. It doesn't matter. Throw it all into the melting pot, man. It keeps our brains going. It gives us more ideas uh, because what we found out when he designs or I design a piece of gear and we put it on market and then we get you guys' feedback and go, that going, I should have put that in there. We, we've had that a couple of times. And so you're seeing that. I think that's why we, this is going to be, a bigger item for us, you know, to have it manufactured and stuff. Uh, can it be done? And what features do you guys want to see as well as us? Uh, I'm, I'm up north. We get winter time. We get snow and cold temperatures. He's down south. You other guys are from Florida and out west and everywhere else. So I love all the import guys. I, I'm right now, because we're running out of time, I want to thank everybody. I want to get that out and say thank you. Number one, I want to thank Blackie Thomas for joining us tonight. Uh, you know, I mean, he just, he's a plethora of information. If you ever get around him, I make fun of him because he's so little yeah. compared to me. But if he stood on his knowledge, he'd be 10 foot tall. He's yeah. a very smart individual. And it's great if you got any questions, hook him up on Facebook. If you guys got a diagram, write it up, send it to him, guys. Yes, please. Uh, and thank you very much for all these comments. Like me and Dan will go through them. We'll make lists out of this, and, and, and this is going to be an ongoing process. It's only a one-time deal. Uh, once we get a rough prototype worked out, we'll come back and do another one of these. We'll show you the rough prototype. I'll do a video showing it in use. Throw it out there, and then you can say, well, I like that, but could you make it do this too? And we'll refine it. And once we get it where it's, this is it, guys. It's, it's, we dialed it in. That's when we'll go see about manufacturing it, etc. And if it turns out to be something that's just, oh my God, there's no way anybody could ever make this this at a price anybody ever want. Okay, we'll admit that. But I think it can be done. 
I really do. I, I do too, and I think it's going to be a bolt piece of gear. Uh, but like I said, me and Blackie, it, it's we we love designing, we love the RD. If you watch my channel, we talk a lot of RD, and you guys don't get to see the behind the scenes. You're seeing something right now blossoming from nothing. This is what's in our brains. This is what we're talking about. So you guys will get to walk along with the development. Uh, we can't talk about everything because money and manufacturers and stuff like that. But you guys get to see the design. We're going to have a prototype out. This ain't going to happen all night, guys. We're, we're going to do the show again, show you the prototype. Then we'll get your feedback again and see if we can incorporate them ideas. Some ideas are great, but we can't get it to work. We just, you know, it's just part of the manufacturing process, stuff like that. But that's what this is about, man. So absolutely Christmas is coming. Uh, so guys, uh, I, I know we're running out of time. I've got five minutes left. Like I said, I, I thank everybody out there for doing this. Uh, uh, I'm still getting questions or comments from you guys, which I love. Uh, uh, but also, uh, you know, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight, man. Like I said, it, it's a, it's a comment. I'm trying to do my banner stuff here. Uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, you know, you can remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, but what I like to do at the end of this show is uh, I'm changing my banners. Uh, what we like to do is thank all our, we, we like to say prayers for our first responders and the frontline people, especially during this. I didn't, you know, I know I got a lot of new people out there. We don't talk about the C word on this channel. This is to get us away from what's going on every day. This is a good discussion to keep our dust off our brains when we're all sitting at home. Uh, and keep us away from the TV a little bit. But we also got to say thanks to my, you know, my wife, she works at the pharmacy, you know, a lot of sick people, you know, with everything going on out there, we need to say our prayers for that, you know, for first responders. Keep them guys in our prayers. They don't run from the fire, guys. They run to it. They don't run, you know, I, I said it before and I'll say it every weekend, uh, shoot my show, is I hate to have a cop pull up behind me, you know, with his lights on. We all do. But he's also the first one there, guys, when you need him. You, you know, so, and like I said, uh, uh, that's why I have it on my thing about saying hey to everybody. Uh, Blackie Gang, final word? No, nope, just thank you, everybody, for all your comments and all your suggestions. Thank you very much for helping us develop this. Yeah, and thank you, guys. I mean, I can't thank you enough because we wasn't stalled out on this, guys. We just, Blackie, me and him started feeding on this and said, you know what, we're getting too much that I would do this, I would do that. We're kind of putting it backwards. <laughs> We're throwing it to you first and seeing what you say. So uh, like, share, and subscribe because I am on YouTube. We're on YouTube right now. Just like watching a video. It's just live. And you'll get your notification bells out there for when this next one comes up. And we'll spread it all over Facebook when we get this prototype built or, or, or some kind of concept. They might be pieces and parts from other bags. You know, it's it's. So don't get crazy about the stitching and <laughs> things go back together. But stay tuned. It really helps the channel out if you like, share, and subscribe, and hit your notification button on me. Uh, with that said, guys, uh, we're a little bit early. Uh, I'll catch up on the comments real quick. Uh, I usually go two hours. If you're uh, if you're new here, thank you for joining me. Uh, what else do I say? I think we, we covered a lot today. <laughs> this is. And we, Stan for letting me come on your channel and get this out there. Oh, absolutely, Becky. You know that. I mean, I, I enjoy this comment because we're all trying to share this knowledge and we're all trying to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's a lot of YouTube guys out there who have a ton of knowledge. There's a lot of schools out there who have a ton of knowledge. Uh, you know, I throw my plug in there. I just come back from the survival school level three. Uh, did I learn anything? No, nah, I've been a woodsman. I, don't, I didn't learn nothing there. Uh, it's a it's a rude awakening because we're stuck in our own ways. I learned a ton down there. Uh, I was also very tired when I come back here. They work you to death. Uh, so guys, if you get a chance to take a survival class, take it, man. You know, somebody's survival school. Uh, I I won't. I do throw James Bender out there. He's a friend of mine. You know, Waypoint Survival. That's where I've been going. Uh, but there's other classes out there. And by the way, Black, we're, me and you going to Georgia Bushcraft, right? We got classes down there. At Georgia Bushcraft, and we're going to be doing instruction down there. And we also got Central High Bushcraft coming. Yep. Correct. Uh, that's that's in, uh, uh, 
Central Ohio is in October. October. And Georgia is in November. There you go. So, guys, you know, prepare and try to get to one of them events, man. We'll be there. Uh, it's a good time to hit us up, and we like to sit around. And, uh, what we say, we like talking to bark out of a dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, guys, thank you very much. We're going to end it here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I don't know what else to say, man. You guys were great. Ton of questions. Thanks for that, guys. See me next week, next Thursday, 7, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Got to go. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.